All right. I'm going to set up. Uh, Golf Clash has announced a new tournament. It's the uh, Paradise Islands Tournament, and it will start uh, next Monday. And we've got holes, holes here from the uh, Kohong Resort and the Oasis. And it looks like Andy's saying no practice holes in Ricky this time. No Ricky practice holes. Not sure where they're all going to be at, but uh, let me set a timer. So last time, <laughs> there's so much to talk about when we're doing these holes that I, what's funny is, is I could spend an hour talking about these holes and I go back and watch it. And then I'm like, uh, there was a bunch of stuff I didn't talk about. <laughs> so I'm going to set a timer here for 30 minutes and we'll see if we can get this done in 30 minutes, which is just a few minutes per hole. Um, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, if you want to, if you like the content, please hit subscribe down at the bottom. What I've done is in YouTube, I've set up a playlist called golf Clash paradise Island, Ricky scouting report. I put 10 videos in here on one of the holes Hole number eight here for that came from the Tropic Kings. I put it in with upper developed clubs and lower developed clubs coming at it from both sides so that you could get a look at it because it does play a little bit different from side to side. The rest of the holes are pretty straightforward. Now, there are a couple shots in here that are max over power hook shots, and um, I'll talk about the regular ways to play them, but I put in max over power hooks because I'm going to try and work those max over power hooks. There's two of the Kohong Resort holes that I want to do max over power hooks on. It's kind of like hole number nine in the tournament we just got done with. So get out your pen and paper, and let me give you the holes here. So we got Kohung Resort and the Oasis. So hole number one is going to be Kohung Resort. It's a par four, and it's hole number one. So when I say it's hole number one of the Kohung Resort course, it's hole number one in this tournament as well. Hole number two is going to be Kohong Resort par three, and it's hole number four. Hole number three is going to be the Oasis. It's a par five, and it's going to be hole number six in the Oasis. Hole number four is from the Oasis. It's a par three, and it's hole number seven. Hole number five is from the Oasis. It's a par four, and it's hole number eight. Hole number six, we're back on Kohung, Kohung Resort. It's par five, and it's hole number three. Hole number seven, back on the Oasis. Par three, hole number five. Hole number eight is Kohong Resort. Par four, hole five. Hole number nine is going to be Kohong Resort. It's a par five, and it's hole nine. All right, so those are going to be the holes. So I went through and just kind of watched the videos that are in that playthrough, and I'm going to talk real briefly about some stuff. And then as the week goes on, we will continue to work these out, especially on the par three. Some of the 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 Kohung Resort par three, some of this stuff I don't know. Some of it's going to be dependent on the way the wind's blowing, and some of it, uh, the elevation, I'll just work out as the week goes on. It's part of my deal. I like this as the seahorse. I think of this as the seahorse hole. Here's its nose. Here's its like little tuft of hair. It could also be the worm where here's its mouth and then here's its little thing. I, it's the seahorse hole. <laughs> so I'm going to do, there's, there are several ways that you can play this hole. Lay it up out here, coming out the green. Um, unless you bring a really big backspin club, it's going to be hard to do a rough bump over here. It's a real super thin rough. But if you bring a big backspin club, you might be able to backspin it, but you're more than likely be doing the bounce over. The other way to go at it is the weave and bob. And the weave and bob is to, if we look at, let's see where we can get the tee box in here. So here's the tee box. And a lot of people are landing out in this area. So if we draw this line through here, you're going to either have to, if you put curl on it, it's coming like this. There's no way you're going to be able to switch curl to come to bring it over here. So you're going to end up bouncing over something. So you're going to be up against this transitional line, trying to get as close as you can because the first bounce coming here, you may have to put a little bit of curl, but you're trying to trying to get that ball to kind of do the S curve because you got to miss this rough. So you're you got to be close to this rough, and then when you're on the other side, you got to be close to this rough. So you got to hit it really good to get up into that area depending on which way the wind's blowing. So over here, you're probably going to be in your short iron. Over here, you're definitely going to be in your long iron range. Um, it really is going to depend on which way the wind's blowing, on which one of those layups I'm going to do. 
So if you were doing a layup and the wind was blowing in this direction, then if you lay up over here, then you've got a pure tailwind into the cup. That's awesome. If the wind's blowing in this direction and you lay up over here, now you're hitting in with a pure side wind, and that's not so awesome. If the wind's blowing this way, this shot's got pure tailwind, and this shot's now against side wind. So depending on which way the wind's blowing, a lot of times on these holes, they'll give us a center, a center mass, or they'll give us something that's more off in this direction. So... Um, I think the last tournament it was blowing off more off in this direction. But if they give us the center mass either side, this side's a little bit tougher to get to, but it does gonna it is gonna give you a better shot. This side's easier to get to, but you're gonna be in your long iron, not short iron. One of the things that's changed since last time we played this hole is we have grizzlies. So if you got a grizzly in your bag, you got a 100% back or 100% long iron, and that can help. What I'm doing here is I'm taking when it's maximum pulled. First cut of the fairway, so we got first cut of the rough and the fairway, white ring off the transition here. When I'm fully extended, so my entire, when I'm fully extended, when I release it, it's it's coming back this direction, so my white ring may be out here in the fairway some, but when it's fully extended, when I'm fully in power, my white ring right inside of the, of the rough here, so... You know, if I count this first edge of the rough here, my white ring was right inside. And you've got very little variance here. So depending on the club, the extra mile you have and how much curl it has, you may or may not even be able to do this shot. But if you've got an extra mile eight, and you could probably do it with an extra mile seven. Because it picks up some curl, even though it doesn't have as much top spin. You have very little variance here where your white ring may be just slightly into the rough or it's right on the transition or it might be slightly. And so you'll have to work that number and where you're at based on your club. The wind in the video that I showed was blowing in this direction. So I left the wind in. Normally on max over power hook shots, I take the wind out. But in this circumstance, the wind was actually helping me. It was going straight forward, just like it was a pure tailwind on the shot setup. So I left the wind in. I brought an extra mile. I believe I brought a kingmaker, and that put me on the green in one. And I took this shot during that last tournament, and the variance that's down here will do a couple things. If you move in, where you're bouncing when you come through this area is you're, you're just barely missing this rough. I clipped this rough a couple times and ended up right out here in front. If you come into the right too much on this max overpower hook, you put the sand into play. And so there was, I ended up on the green, in front of the green a couple times, and then I ended up a couple where I actually came through and I ended up in the rough right down here. And I don't know, I would, I would, I don't mind this being this close with the rough iron. It just boils down to perfect. If you hit it perfect, you're in the hole. And so when we talk about risk versus reward, this isn't a bad deal to do this max overpower hook as far as risk versus reward. But if you try this, there is a risk that you could end up in the drink over here. I never ended up in the drink over here. I did one time in one of the practice rounds that's end up in the sand. But we do have some options on this hole. The video that's in the playlist shows the max overpower hook. This shot's really straightforward. This shot here is a little more technical because you got a weave and bob. And I think my opponent did this. But what I saw a lot when we were playing the Kohung Resort holes was I saw a lot of people when we originally played them in the spring major. I saw a lot of people doing mid overpower hook shots where instead of like, here's your perfect shot and here's where the needle ends. They were doing these things in the middle. And I'm not a fan of that at all. If you're going to do that, why don't you just try and hit the perfect? One of the things I like about max overpower hook shots is when the needle comes over here, it's easy to find when you're in an overpower shot. It's easy to find where it's stopping over here. You watch it go back and forth a couple of times and you can judge that. So you can hit it with full a full hook almost every time. Um, but when you're trying to do a, a mid one, what in the heck? I mean, how are you going to replicate that? You may get it perfect one time, but I just don't see that there's any replication on that. And I had a couple holes that I was previewing for this playlist where I saw my opponents do it. And I remember during the spring major on these Kohang resorts, there was a lot of people doing these half hooks. And I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I'm either doing a full hook or I'm doing a regular shot trying to hit perfect. But you do have three different ways that you can come at this hole. The seahorse hole. Hole number two, Kohung Resort, par three, hole number four. 
All right. I'm not this hole right here is the is the most hole in one game hole in the game. And I guarantee you that this is going to be the hole that they're going to put in the uh, golden shot. The last time this was in a tournament, it was also in the golden shot. And this hole right here is very hole in one -able. There is a slight wind adjustment we have to do. And in the last tournament, I think the wind might have been different than it was in this tournament. In the last tournament that it was in, I think that was the Pacific Cup, the wind was going in this direction. And I, I'm not sure which way it was blowing in this one. There are several ways that you can come at this hole. And it is super hole in one bowl. If we draw the terrain here, so we're starting from here, coming up. I'm not, this right here is completely out of play. I'm not even going to talk about this. Let's just talk about this area right here. So if you're at point A, you're here, and then it goes over a hump, and then it comes down, and then it rolls out to the green, and the flagpole's right here. Right here being the peak of it. I see a lot of people who set their shot up on this side of the hill and try and bounce it over. Okay, I am absolutely not a fan of this because the terrain right here rolls like this. There is a slight little bit of curvature to the to the to the fairway area right here. And if you hit it a little bit too far forward, I mean think about the trajectory. If you hit a little bit higher up the hill, it wants to bounce higher. You hit a little bit lower, it wants to bounce flat. Hit a little bit to the left or the left, it wants to go one way. You hit a little bit to the right, it wants to go another. And I see a ton of people who shoot in the back here who epic fail. And it's not, and in my opinion, it's not a consistent shot. The way to go, the way I'm going to go at this, and the only way I'm ever going to work on this hole is I'm going to come up into this area right here, and I'm going to use backspin, and I'm going to dig that in. On my notes here, Last time I was here, I think I used a backbone, but now we've, once again, we've got a grizzly at our disposal. So backspin, I'm, I'm probably going to put on max backspin and I'm going to push that ball down in. And it's and what will happen is, is that when you're up in this area, let's draw the terrain here. It's up on this and then it comes down and it draws it out. When you're up here, you're seeing these bounces. And the more you pull it down here, it's almost doing a rough bump in the fairway. And so the more you push it down, the more it wants to, instead of bouncing up on the next bounce, it wants to dig in and it'll shorten your ball guide up and you can guide that right to the cup. And this is a very, very hole in a hole. I mean, I don't know if there's another par three that affords you as good an opportunity to get a hole in one as this hole. So as the week goes on, we'll definitely want to be working on this hole to work out the wind adjustment because there is going to be some kind of an adjustment we're going to do, and it will be dependent on which way the wind's blowing. And this is definitely one of those cups. The last time this was in a tournament, they changed it from the first time. And so the way that the cup worked, instead of aiming right at the flagpole, you had to aim, the wind was blowing in this direction, and you had to aim on this side even with the little adjustment that we were doing. So this is a hole that we're going to work. We want to work on this hole immediately because this is a super hole in one of a hole. And we're going to need to pick this up at least once, if not both times we get to it, if we want any chance of being at the top. All right. Hole number three is going to be at the Oasis. And it's par five and it's hole number six. We haven't played these Oasis holes in a long time. Um, this particular hole right here is not one of my favorite par fives. I, there are several things I don't like about this hole. I'm not even going to talk about anything over here. If you want to hit this shot, um, and you can go out there. What I, what I ask you to do, and what I encourage you to do, is go out here and hit this shot one time and really, really be conscious of trying to stay in the fairway. And the shot coming in is super sucky. <laughs> you'll work really hard to get out here and it's a super sucky shot. Even if you're way up in the front, you, I mean, it's not, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that you can do it. And if you're doing this, I think I did this a couple times where I was up in here and I brought a sniper and then I tried to get way down in here and I brought a guardian and you can get, you've got some shots to get up there, but if, but really the, the look, if you're trying to get Albi and I'm not even going to use the word Albi on this hole, because this is a hole right here that can bite you hard and it's, it can bite you hard in two ways. Number one, on the drive, you've got to do a bounce, did he bounce, did he bounce, and get it to stick up here. If you've got lower developed clubs, you're going to need to bring a wood that's got distance, or, and you're going to need to bring a big ball. Because the second shot, especially if you're in the middle of this island, this fairway island, the second shot's a long shot, and you want the ball, you want the club with the best ball guide that you can possibly bring. 
So if you have lower developed clubs, what's hard here is you'll probably have to bring your big dog. And the deal with that is, is that it'll give you the distance you're looking for, but you won't have any ball guide. And this green is super, super sensitive. And if you come into it with any amount of speed at all, it's very easy on the backside over here. You can't see it because of that flag. I mean, here's the backside of the green and here's the fringe and there's a little teeny bit of fairway and bam, you're in the rough. And it is super easy to overshoot this. The other thing about this hole is that if you get on it and you, it's, it, it does, it's hard to see in the picture, but the, the green slopes like this. And so you can end up with some extremely, if you're out here in front and you're trying to chip it on, you're going to be out here trying to chip it on down the hill and it's going to be wanting to do this. And, and it can be a very tricky spot to get the ball to go into the cup. It's not a bad idea to, if you, if you're having a lot of problems on this hole, it's not a bad idea to be low so that you're kind of going up the hill and going right at it so you don't have to contend so much with this curl. Even when you're close up, if you're just past it or if you're just over here, you still have to do one of those putts where you're here and the cup is right here. And instead of going straight, you've got to do it like this. And it's very easy to, uh, to miss a putt here because in a lot of these spots, and it's very easy to miss chips because in a lot of these spots, you're not having to contend with wind. But you have to you have to be conscious of the drop, the gravity that's going on. And so you can end up if you come out here and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about the first time you miss one. You're like, hey, wind wasn't a factor. And I was going right at the cup, right at the flagpole. And what happened was, is as it slows down and it's going towards the cup, it starts gravity starts to pull it and then it misses the cup on the inside. So you've got to allow for that on this hole. This is a very tricky green to come into on this par five. I am not, it's not that Albie's out of the question here. People are going to get Albie's on this hole, but I am not going to involve the word Albie on this hole. I'm going to try and give myself a shot at it. But my goal here is to make sure that I don't end up in the rough on the backside because it's very easy to do it. And it, uh, I'm going to focus this week on Eagle here because this is a hole that's going to ruin a lot of people's rounds. Hole number four, it's par three. It's hole number seven of the Oasis. All right, this is another hole that I have actually, I'm going to, this is the hole, like when I pick a hole that I really want to work on and I'm going to learn how to play this week. This par three right here is I'm going to, I'm going to talk to my clan mates and I'm going to talk to some of my buddies that stream and I'm going to work. This is a hole right here that I'm going to, I'm going to work on because I haven't had a lot of success on this hole. And I played it in several different ways. This is a hole, especially if you're playing from the pro tees. This is a this hole will kick your butt. And I've played it where I've come up here with my guardian and tried to stick it to the cup. And you can you'll you'll get birdie, but there ain't no chance that you're going to get an albie by doing the backspin. Um, typically, we're going to be bouncing it over so that we're on this fairway pad, bouncing it over. In the past, the last time we played this tournament, I brought a sniper and a katana. And I was doing a 10% wind adjustment. And it's one of these things down here on this pad that if you hit it great to the, because you can see the moguls that are here. So there's not a really good flat area. There's a dip right here and there's a ridge that goes like this. And so there's, it's one of those areas that if you hit it great to the right, it takes an irregular bounce to the right and you end up way to the right. It's also, if you're on the wrong side of this dip right here and you hit it great to the left, it could end up to the right. And so it's one of those landing areas that I'm going to I'm going to have to look at it. You're pretty close to minimum sniper. So it might not be it might not it might be one of those holes where instead of bringing a katana you bring a kingmaker and you bring a goliath so that you're in your max goliath and the goliath might hit it better. So I'm going to work on this hole this week and I'm going to I'm not going to talk about how I want to play this hole because I'm going to play this hole in a bunch of different ways this week and I'm going to look around, talk to my teammates, like I said, talk to my buddies and see how, how I want to play this hole because anything I tell you right here is basically just trying to get you a birdie. And I really don't even know how to get a hole in one here. I know I've hit a few, but this is not one of my favorite par threes in the game. We all have to have something that we're working on, right? All right, that was hole number four. Hole number five is Oasis hole number eight. All right, I put in the playlist, I put two ways to play this. I brought in my low level, low level account and I played it over to this side. This is A. And then uh, with my upper developed account, I hit over here and that's B. 
Now you do need to make sure, just to point out, when you bring the club that's on the other side to hit in, you want to make sure you bring a club that's got a little bit of topspin on it because you'll need topspin to dig out of the rough. And sometimes if you've got lower developed stuff, you may have to bring a different club than you may normally play because you need something that's got a little bit of topspin. So to get out into this area right here, a lot of people, when they come out here, they are trying to get all the way out to the end. And I will grant you that if you get all the way out here to the end, you're going to be more in your short iron and you can involve this island if you don't like doing rough bumps. But this is pretty much a rough bump hole because the green looks like this. Here's the green and here's the flagpole. There's no getting up here and back spinning it on. I mean, even with a thorn, it's going to be super, super close that you would be able to get to it. I mean, it is... It is the cup is really close to the edge. So the rough bump here is definitely going to be the preferred way to come at this. Going over to this side right here, you do not have to get up here. All you have to do is get in front of that tree. So if we draw a line here from the green from the flagpole, and if I can get my pen to work, if we can draw a line from the flagpole to the tree, you just need to get somewhere on this side of that line so that when you're out here, you're taking a shot and you've got a clear, no obstructions, rough bump to the cup. But if you're behind the tree, now you got a little bit of a problem because you're going to have to do some kind of curl to bring it to the cup. And, I, and you really, from this angle, you don't want to involve this island unless you, unless you absolutely have to. But I don't know why you'd absolutely have to unless the shot got tanked to begin with. So you just need to be to the left of those trees when you end up in your ending spot. So if you think about it from the tee box, if we draw the line here again, we need to be over here somewhere and we draw a line from there to the tee box. We don't have that far to go. You know, we can start ourselves out out here and a, an accurate club works best. So you're starting off here, especially if you got side spin. You will need a little bit of distance because if you've got a QB, it's probably going to want to terminate here. So you'll need a little bit of... You know, you'll need a little bit of top spin in order to clear that tree, but you don't need a lot to get out into this area. I see a lot of people come out here and they put, they set their ball up here and then they put a bunch of curl on it. And then what happens is this curl's not representing your ball guide. So you put that curl on it and they end up like this and they end up out in the rough out here. And so bringing a big side spin ball like a Kingmaker or a Katana and using max side spin. And just a little teeny bit of curl to walk yourself around the corner. If you're going to use curl, I would come out, like line it up and then move it out a ring to give you more room for that curl to become effective. So if you got lower developed stuff, that's a definite way to go at it. If you've got an extra mile, probably, I'm not sure on ball, like maybe an extra mile six will work. You may have to use some overpower, but I'm not a fan of coming over to this side right here and using any overpower. The goal is to land right here. You need to leave yourself enough room so that if you hit a grade on the left, you don't clip this, but you don't want to hit a grade to the right because when it comes through this area, you're aiming like this. So you're going to need a ball with side spin once again to bring you back to the fairway. But if you clear this, let's say you hit a grade on the inside and you clear it here, then the ball is going to be here and then you take a risk of clipping the rough right here. If you're out here and you hit a grade to the right, now you're out here and now you take the risk of clipping the rough. So there's a little teeny window here to get through and the goal is to get out to the shadow. That's going to give you a nice, clean, short iron shot. And, I, and for me, I believe, and in the video I I got the adjustment wrong for it, but I was in mid club right here, right there in the shadows. So you're in about mid short iron and you've got a little bit of distance here that you can move forward to try and eke yourself into minimum short iron. And anybody who watches my stuff on a rare basis, minimum short iron is awesome. Your short iron is twice as accurate when it's a minimum club. So anytime you can get yourself into minimum short iron, that's always good. I'm doing a straightforward rough bump. I can't remember on this hole if there was a wind adjustment. I have on my notes a 10%, but I think I wrote that down and I was actually in the wrong part of my club. So I'm not sure if we need to be doing a wind adjustment or if it's just in a mid club or where we're at. So that'll be something to work on as the week goes on. Hole number six. We're back on Kohong Resort. Kohong Resort. And I am not going to make my 30 minutes. Kohong Resort. Old number three. All right, this is a pretty straightforward shot. I am a huge fan. We're hitting into a narrow area down here. Think about how your rings work. 
Now you got to let's say, let's take a quarterback. You got an extra mile and a QB. And this math isn't absolutely correct, but here's your your yellow ring. Okay, your yellow ring from this side to this side is two miles per hour. So from dead center to the edge of your what your orange ring is one mile per hour, right? So your orange ring is right here, and that's one mile per hour. And your blue ring's right here, and that's one mile per hour. And your clear ring's right here, and that's one mile, and that's one mile. So when you're with a with a QB and you hit a one ring great to the left or the right, it's only one miles per hour great to the left or the right. So when you're coming in this area right here and you're trying to come through this little narrow neck to terminate right here, a one ring great to the left or the right is not going to hurt you. <laughs> Because you're going to end up coming right through here, and you're going to end up coming right through here, and you're going to be fine. Extra mile, a okay? center ring, even when it's maxed out. And we'll do it a little more to scale. Let me erase that. Center ring, right here. Okay, here's the dead center. This center ring is 4.2 miles per hour. So half of it is 2.1. That represents two rings on your quarterback. So if you hit a great to the left or the right, you hit it two miles per hour great to the left or the right. Now you're starting to flirt with the rough on, on either side. So anytime you can bring when you're hitting a drive shot through a narrow neck like that, anytime you can bring an accurate club, you're much better off. Definitely bringing a kingmaker on this hole to cut the wind down on both shots so that I can stabilize the drive to end up in the middle and then taking the shot to the cup. There's two ways that you can take the shot to the cup. You can bring... If you get way out there, you can start off on this side with a guardian, but you got to get way up there. Hold on. Ah! Oh, that felt so good. Allergy season. No, it's not the coronavirus. I just have allergies. Let's talk about this area up here. I'm bringing a sniper and I'm hitting on this area. And I like this particular type of rough. Like normally I tell people always be two rings off of any transitional surface. This particular rough where it terminates here is flat. So one second you're on the fairway and the next second you're in the rough and it's absolutely flat. There's none of that curvature that we see on a lot of holes where it, it comes down and it curves down and the fairway ends right here. And you want to leave yourself some gap because if you hit up here on this, you're going to go for a ride. It's absolutely flat. So you can scoot forward a little bit here. I'm still going to be at least one ring off. There's no way I'm not, not going to be at least one ring off just to give myself a little variance. When you come out, this is your first bounce. Your second bounce is coming in here. You're almost doing a second bounce rough bump, even though you're on the fairway here because it's so steep on this side. On this side right here, it comes off of this rough and then it's really steep and then it comes up to the cup. So your second bounce is coming in and you're almost rough bumping it from that point. And you can take it right to the cup. Right to the cup. Let's see, was I doing any wind adjustment on here? I didn't write down if I was doing any wind adjustment. I think on the drive going into the cup, I just did a max, a, a, just a max wind ring adjustment, just one per ring because I brought a sniper. But this is a very, this hole here is a, this is an albiable hole. We can use the word albi on this hole. Um, this is a hole that we can win and get an Albion. So, but the thing is, is that you can't win if you don't end up out here in the fairway. And you can easily get out here in the fairway if you bring an, a quarterback, a rock, one of your really 100% accurate clubs. Hole number seven. We're back on the Oasis. Yeah, that was 30 minutes. <laughs> Almost 30 minutes. Hole number seven is par three is hole number five. All right, we got to talk about this hole. This is the, I call this the fish hole. And when I played tour nine, this was the bane of my existence. Um, when you're playing it from the back tees, um, you can do the rough bump when you're playing from the second tee. If you've got a club that's got backspin, you have to bring a backspin club on this. So even if you've got a level one guardian, you can get it done with a level one guardian. You just have to, I think it's about, I think on mine, I was using about seven backspin. It was somewhere in that neighborhood. I think it was about seven backspin. You can hit over here and try and bring it around. 
I don't think of that as a big way to get a hole in one on this hole, but you can get up there. You can try and bounce it over. And then that's fraught with danger as well, because this hole's got a big wind adjustment on it. And th there's another thing you need to understand about this hole. This is an old hole. And if you're back here on the back and you're not on the fringe, that's a max overpower putt. And so anything in this circle is a max overpower putt. And anything outside of that circle, you can't make the putt. You, you won't even be able to make the putt. You won't even be able to get to the hole. So you definitely want to be close. The way I'm going to come at it in Ricky is I'm going to do a rough bump off of this second cut of the rough. And I'm going to bring my Guardian. I'm going to do a full wind adjustment. So whatever the max number is on your Guardian, I'm going to do a full wind adjustment plus 20%. And it's going to depend on which way the wind's blowing. So I'm going to, I may have to work this number, but I've, I spent the time and worked on this hole to try and figure out how to do this rough bump. And I've gone, depending on how the wind's blowing, I've gone as high as, as 40% and I've gone as low as 20%. In the last tournament that it was in, I did a 20% wind adjustment and I hold and wind it two or three times that week. I think I used to hate this hole. And now when I get on this hole, I think of this hole as a hole in one hole. Because with the Guardian here, and it's hard to make the adjustment. It's one of those ones where you have to kind of spin it around and look at it back here so that you can get your, your backspin lined up to the cup. And then adjust it so you're going right at the cup. Do your wind adjustment plus your max wind adjustment plus 20%. And this has become a very hole in oneable hole for me. And I'm going to look at it that way. I am actually was excited at this because this is a hole that eats a lot of people's lunch. And I figured this hole out. And we can get hole in ones on here. As the week goes on, I'll start posting some videos on this hole because this is definitely a hole that we can get a hole in one. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Kmart sucks. All right, hole number eight. We're back on Kohong Resort. And we're on hole number five, and this is a par four. All right, this is another hole that I'm doing a max or power hook shot on. And let me, let me, it is super easy to end up right here. This is shot A. And shot A is going to give you several options. You can bounce off this island and go over to the cup. That's option A. You can do a rough bump. And I may switch and move off the max overpower hook and go to this shot right here. Because you can do a rough, and it's all going to be on what, which way the wind's blowing. You can do a rough bump. You can bring a backspin club and backspin it to the hole. So you can bring a Saturn or an upper level Grim Reaper and you can try and backspin it onto the cup. You can do the rough bump or you can bounce off the island. You have three different options here depending on which way the wind's blowing. So in one-on-one, -on -one, it's not a bad play to hit out here. But for whatever reason, it seems like it's hard to get out here into the right spot. And I never really liked this shot. In one-on-one -on -one play, I play exclusively to shot B, saying this is shot A. And what I do out here is if I'm with my QB, I'm three rings off of this transitional surface. And you'll have to work it for your QB. If you've got an upper level QB, it might be four. If you've got an upper developed rock, I'm about six rings off of this transitional surface. I take out, I put on max top spin, maximum right hand side spin. I take the wind out and I do a max curl, no overpower, just a max curl shot. And it'll bleed right down the middle. And your goal is to get into these shadows. If you bring an extra mile out here, you can get way out here into these shadows. And the farther you get out, if you draw a line on this rough, the farther you get out, the more you open up the shot so that you don't have to use curl. You can just use side spin. So this is a this hole really lends itself. If you don't pick up enough distance out here, it really lends itself to bringing a three side spin ball. And one on one play, this hole always it, the first shot's easy. The second shot, it always hurts me because I bring a marlin and I don't have enough side spin to get to the cup. So I have to add curl. Whenever you add curl to a shot, it diminishes your chances of making it. From out here, you got a wood. From over here, you got a long iron. If you do the max overpower hook shot, you can get up here and you've got a short iron. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to practice this max overpower hook shot and see if it's, and, and relearn how to do it. But here's what I got. This is, I took this shot a bunch of times the last time this was in a tournament. And this is what I got. Extra mile. Kingmaker. Extra mile. Kingmaker. And this shot might actually be easier now because I have a club in my bag that I didn't have before. 
and that is the rock got buffed. And if you've got a maxed out rock, a level eight rock, we may be able to do stuff where we come more through the middle and we don't put as much stuff into play. So a rock might not be a bad, a bad deal. Extra mile, blue ring at max on the transition. So when I pull my ball guide out here and I maximum pull it out, I'm putting my one ring, if I can get to draw one ring, two rings, my blue ring right on the transition between the rough and the fairway when it's fully maxed. On the transition, I put on 4.5 top spin and I put on six right side spin. And it and it bled right th right through the middle and ended up right out here. And then from that point on, you're in. I was in actually. I when I took the shot in the video I did, I made a bad wind adjustment. I was in mid club, and so if I could have got a little bit more distance, and I probably could have put a little. What what happened on that shot when I set it up was I had a kingmaker. When I set the shot, I set the spin up, the top spin and the side spin with the kingmaker, and then I switched to an extra mile. And so there, I left some top spin on the table, um, but the side spin was six hand, six right hand side spin, and ending up right out here. I took the shot with an extra mile with those settings, and I've got that video in there and set it up. I tried that shot throughout the week. It took me like five times before I finally found the area, and then I shot that shot, and I hit it like four or five times in a row. And so there is a max RPR hook that you can get into your short iron, long iron, or wood. So you got three options on that hole. Hole number nine is Kohang Resort hole number nine. And we just had this tournament, this in uh, the Pacific Cup tournament. So it should be fresh on everybody's mind. A lot of people do not like this hole. There's two ways. There's the A side and there's the B side. I play the A side exclusively in one-on-one. -on -one. I play this in T7 and this is the only, the, the A is the only way I play it because you can come out here with a Marlin and I have a bag with a big topper and a big dog. And one of the things I like about big toppers and big dogs is they have tons of toss and they have tons of curl. So I can come out here with a Marlin and point my ball guide so that it's right on that transition, do a max overpower shot with maximum curl. And even if you hit it three rings good to the right or three rings good to the left, it'll end up out here in the middle of the fairway. And with the big dog, because you have so many options with it, it's very easy to walk it around and you can get up on the green. And you're looking at Eagle probably, or if I can spell today, Eagle, you're probably looking at Eagle 90, 95% of the time. But your Albi shot is zero, zero chance for Albi. So I'm not taking that shot in the tournament. I'm going to come at it this way, shot A, option B, and I'm going to bring either a rock or a QB. And I'm going to bring a Kingmaker because I want to cut the wind down and I'm going to try and get my ball right to that shadow. And so you don't have to get way up in there. You don't, you don't have to get way up in here in order to make this happen. You just need to get to that shadow. And so setting up on this spot right here and just weaving it up, no overpower, no nothing. And I want to bring the most accurate clubs in my bag to put me up by that shadow because this is just a layup. I'm just trying to get the ball in the right spot because the shot that counts is the second shot coming to the cup. And I'm bringing a sniper, whatever you have in your bag that's got the best ball guide. So if you got really low developed clubs, you know, whatever you got that's got the best ball guide. One of the things about the Horizon is it has crappy ball or it has crappy accuracy, but it does have pretty good ball guide. I think with my lower level account in on this hole, I think I might have played it with my Horizon just because you need some top spin. And the and the Viper didn't have enough. So I think I might have hit this with my lower level account with my Horizon. And the deal there is, is it's not a bad club if you hit it perfect. If you don't hit it perfect and you got a lower developed horizon, it's 2.8 miles per hour off to the left or the right. <laughs> so make sure that when you're coming in, you leave yourself enough room on this so that if you did hit a great to the right on that horizon, you don't clip it. But with a with a sniper, you got a nice shot. This is another hole that's that is eagle or excuse me, is albiable. And so, you know, this is a great hole to get an albi. And we want to give ourselves a look at it. Now, I don't see any holes in here that are like, give me holes. Um, one of the par threes, however, is very hole in one And that fish par three is another one that, in my opinion, is also very hole in one The first par four, that max overpower hook shot that's on there, you can get on a one. I mean, there's three places right there where you can pick a shot up. 
um, not including the two par fives that you do have serious albi looks on. So we have a lot of opportunities in this. Um, as easy as hole number as the first part as that par three is, as far as getting the hole in one on that hole, and I'm I'm not sure if that was hole number two. Or was it hole number, I think it was hole number two. We have a serious chance of getting a hole in one on that hole. And I, I really think that going in, I mean, I don't see any absolute where you, I, I, there's a couple holes that I think you're going to have to pick shots up on. But as far as like minimum score, I think we're at the base of minus 12. And I, I really think you're going to have to pick, you know, as far as like the minimum stuff goes, you're really, there's a lot of holes in here. They're going to eat people's lunches. And so if you can come in with the minimum score and looking at those holes, especially that one par three, especially hole number one, the two par fives, you've got a lot of opportunities to pick up. But I really do think that what we're looking for at the beginning of the week is just shooting the, the minus 12 score, which is just a straight up round. That's a birdie on all the par threes. That's a birdie on all the par fours. That's an eagle on all the par fives. And just getting that round in your bag so that you, you don't have to stress out about the minimum score. So you're looking at minus 12, minus 24 is your absolute minimum going in. And we have a ton of opportunities to pick shots up. And so as the week goes on, we'll kind of tighten that up as far as like what it's going to take to win in the weekend round. I think we're right back to where we've been the last forever. You know, we're up there towards 30 is what we're looking at because there are two par fives couple of the par fours are are super eagleable. Um, two of the par threes are hole in oneable. I mean, I think we have we have a lot of opportunities here to pick up shots. And so thinking about picking up like three extra shots on a side is not completely out of the realm of possibilities. So I think if you're looking for a banner, you want to be more towards the 30 plus, which is almost exactly what it was in the last tournament. But I think as far as minimum score going into the into the weekend and what we're looking for is a minus 12, minus 24 to set ourselves up for tiebreakers. These two right here will get you like top 15 in tiebreakers. And they'll definitely get you into the weekend round. Because I, even though there are holes that we can pick stuff up on, there's holes that are super dangerous here that people are going to epic fail on. And I definitely think if you shoot just the minimum score, you're, you're absolutely looking at the weekend round and you're probably looking at a top 15 in tiebreakers. If you want to get a win, you're probably looking at 30 plus. All right. That was uh, just a kind of a basic walkthrough scouting report on the upcoming tournament. I've already forgot its name. So let's go look at it one more time here. What, what was it again? It was the uh, Paradise Island. Paradise Islands tournament starting on Monday. Let's go check out the uh, go check out my homepage here. I think Des put it up. Our buddy Desmond. Did Desmond put it up here? Yes. GC Des. How you doing, Des? Um, Paradise Island Tournament starts Monday, March 30th. And I will, uh, I'll start posting some content. I, like they said, I'm not sure if they're going to open it up and they're going to give us some holes in Ricky. I may play some Tour 7 just so that I can look at the 08 or the uh, Kohan Resort holes and start posting some of that just so that we can see kind of the shots going into the green. And I'll play this week. If you like the content, Please hit subscribe down at the bottom. The channel's doing really good. We were at uh, going into the the last tournament. I was trying to get to 600, and right there at the beginning of the week for the walkthrough, I got to 600 viewers. So now we're at, uh, where is my channel? Where is it? We're at 626 now, so we picked up about 30 viewers last, last tournament. Trying to get uh, trying to get to a thousand so that I can mobile stream. I can stream on my mobile device because I'm out and about all the time, and I'm and I'm not always at my computer in my office. And just trying to uh, pick up people. So if you like the content, please hit subscribe. If you're in a clan and your clan mates need help and you want to uh, give them the info, great. If you're in a clan and you're having fun, stay with your clan. If you're in a clan and your clan's not helping you and they're not supporting you trying to get banners and you you're not you're not getting that support from your clan and it's not helping you out, um, feel free to look up the Kings of Golf. We have two open clans, Kings of Golf three and the Kings of Golf two, and you're welcome to join those clans. You can also message me on here and I can get a hold of you if you're interested in joining the Kings of Golf. But uh, have a great week. 
get see if we can get some of these holes in practice. Hopefully we can, and if we can't, um, have fun, and I will try and post some videos from T7. Thanks for watching.